Welcome, this video is for section H of the AP Calc Summer Packet, and that section talks about properties of negative and fractional exponents. You're going to need to know some of the other properties of exponents as well, but really one of the big ideas that we need to keep in the back of our head as we're going throughout this course next year is how we can convert negative exponents to positive exponents, vice versa, and how we can deal with fractional exponents, and how we can rewrite them back and forth, because they're going to come up in problems. Essentially, you're going to find that when we deal with derivatives and integrals, if we can keep things in exponential form, even if the exponents are negative, even if the exponents are fractions, it's going to make the actual calculus we do that much easier. Um, and I've noticed in the past that a lot of students struggle with seeing where there's a negative exponent in a problem, where there's a, there could be a fractional exponent in a problem. So that's why I threw this section into the summer assignment. So to remind you again, x to the negative a equals 1 over x to the a. Okay, so in other words, if you see an exponent in a fraction, in a denominator, a reciprocal exponent, if you will, you can move it back up top and just make it a negative exponent. Likewise, if you see a fractional exponent, that is the same thing as the nth root of x to the m. Maybe you remember the old flower power rule that we talked about in Algebra 2, where the flower is the power, the root is the root. Basically, it's important to know these two conversions, because like I said, when we do some derivatives, you might see expressions that look like 1 over x to the a, or the nth root of x to the m. Rewriting them as either a negative or a fractional exponent will make the calculus a lot easier. But also don't forget some of the other properties of exponents that you've talked about in the past. Remember when you multiply like bases, x to the a times x to the b, you add the exponents up and we get x to the a plus b. If you divide exponents of like bases, you subtract the power, so we get x to the a minus b. And then if you have a power and you raise it to a higher power, so x to the a raised to the b power, we take the two exponents and we multiply them together. They're really the exponent rules that you're going to need for this packet. There are a few other ones that you've learned along the way. Make sure you review them as well, um, because they can come up in problems throughout the course of next year. Let's look at just some examples that I came up with that are sort of similar to the ones in the summer packet. So if I ask you to simplify negative 5x cubed, all of that to the negative 2 power. All right, well, for starters, I want to distribute the power of 2 into both the negative 5 and the x cubed. That should be negative 2. All right. So I've got negative 5 to the negative 2 power, but I don't really know how to do something to a negative 2 power. So why don't I turn it into a reciprocal, 1 over negative 5 squared. And I can do the same thing with this, 1 over x cubed squared. So then that gets me 1 over 25. And then x cubed squared, I multiply the two exponents and I get x to the sixth. Let's look at another one. 16x to the negative 2 raised to the 3 fourths power. So again, I'm going to take that 3 fourths and I'm going to 2 it to both terms of the product. So I'll do 16 to the 3 fourths, and I'll multiply that by x to the negative 2 raised to the 3 fourths. All right, so for the number, well, that's like saying the fourth root of 16, and we cube it. So that part's going to be 2 cubed, which is 8, because the fourth root of 16 is 2. And then x to the negative 2 raised to the 3 fourths power. We've got our power to a power again. So we'll multiply the two exponents together. That gets the x to the negative 3 halves. We never really like negative exponents as our final answer. So we will send that down. So instead of it being 8 times x to the negative 3 halves, we can write it as 8 over x to the positive 3 halves. Okay, let's look at one more about x to the 1 half minus x to the negative, sorry, sorry, x to the 1 half minus x, the entire quantity raised to the negative 2. 
All right, well, for starters, don't like the negative 2, so why don't we put that whole expression underneath a 1 and make the reciprocal of it. So now this becomes 1 over the quantity x to the 1 half minus x squared. Well, when we see a quantity squared like this, a binomial, that's basically telling me that I want to FOIL x to the 1 half minus x times itself. Okay, so we'll do our first term. x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half is x to the first because we add the exponents. Minus x to the 3 halves. I'm doing the outer and the right there. And then the inner will be another minus x to the 3 halves. And then my last will be positive x squared. We combine all that, we get x minus 2x to the 3 halves plus x squared. So we'll plug that in in our denominator. So this expression will simplify to 1 over x minus 2x to the 3 halves plus x squared. I hope this just refreshes your memory about some things relating to fractional exponents and negative exponents. The idea is, you know, if you're seeing a if you're seeing a reciprocal, you can rewrite the reciprocal exponent using a negative. If you see a radical, you can rewrite it using a fractional exponent. Okay. So, like I said, hopefully that helps you with some of the problems. Um, thank you for watching, and best of luck as you continue through the summer assignment.